Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christian, but you may know me as King. I thought it was going to be a good idea to make a video with the best tips so you can have a good start on your Disney College program. So a little background on me, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. I am currently a guest service agent for Spirit Airlines at the San Juan Airport. I was supposed to be a flight attendant and started my training in December, but everything got put on hold. Most of you don't know that I am a Disney alumni. I have done two other college programs. The first one I did was in 2019. Started on January 28th and lived on Vista Way on Building 23. My role was quick service food and beverage for Cosmic Rays. And six months after, I was chosen to be part of the opening team for Star Wars Galaxy Stitch. And my other role was guest flow slash attractions. Then after that, I came back home, worked for the Disney Store, and I did my second program on 2022. Started on March 7th, lived in Flamingo Crossings West, Building 40, and my role was photo pass in Animal Kingdom. Four months after that, I was chosen to be part of Disney Premium Services, and my role was VIP Tour Support. I felt both of my programs programs were like total opposite, starting with housing. We all know that Vistaway did not have the best reputation, but there's many, many things that I would take into consideration besides the live-in situation, like how Flamingo is far from everything. But on the other hand, taking an Uber from Vistaway never broke my bank. In Flamingo Crossings, it's a different story. I know it's expensive, but I have no complaints about housing. I do feel it's reasonable for the amount of things that you get. You get free transportation, pool, gym, security, service window. They rent out everything and anything that you can imagine. I don't know if you know about Orlando, but rent in Orlando is not cheap. So I feel it's fine. So the only difference that my programs had is that the cultural representatives and the ICPs were already living in Vistaway when I got there. On my second one, that program was coming back from COVID and they probably got there like a month before I departed my program. It's an amazing and beautiful experience to live with people from all over the world. But obviously if I had to pick a program, I would probably choose the second one because I already knew what I was getting myself into. And that's the reason why I wanted to create this video. I wanted to give you the most helpful advice and all the things that I wish I knew before going in. Before I give you the most necessary things that you will need for your program, I want to give you five tips. The first one, do not pack a lot of clothes. 70% of the time you're gonna have your costume on and I know some people can't help bring in their entire closet, but be mindful that you are probably gonna purchase some stuff too, so yeah document as much as you can the reason why i started doing vlogs in my second cp is because i wish that i did it in my first one sometimes randomly i'll just watch the videos and it brings me so much joy and obviously no backstage photos or videos but i would just say document everything don't go crazy purchasing everything that you see participants always will buy the trendiest things and when they're done they'll be putting a post with 20 spitty jerseys that they never wore end of program sale it really takes a lot for me to purchase stuff at the parks because most of the time the merchandise will go to cast connections if you're gonna go crazy at least get it with a good discount visit other theme parks a lot of people don't know that you don't only have admissions to the orlando theme parks magic kingdom animal kingdom epcot hollywood studios typhoon lagoon and blazer beach but most of the parks around the world. Disneyland, Disney California Adventure, Shanghai Disneyland, Hong Kong Disneyland, Walt Disney Studios, and Disneyland Paris. The only two parks that you don't get free admission is Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea. But as a reminder, you have to be a active college program participant to be able to get into the parks. Check the block out days too. I would also add if traveling is out of your budget, there's other theme parks and experiences that I would recommend like Universal Studios, Islands of Adventures, SeaWorld, Bush Gardens, and other seasonal offerings like Halloween Nights, Hollow Springs, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, and Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Make friends. I know that this might be hard for some people and hearing about it, it might cost you some anxiety, but take the opportunity that you're already going to be living with somebody that you don't know and working with people for the first time. Most of the friends that I had on my CP were from my work location. I can tell you from personal experience that my core memories are with my DCP friends. Okay, so now let's get into the things that I thought were necessary for me to be living in the Disney College program, but both. I separated them into five categories. Each contains items that kind of relate to each other so let's just get right in shall we number one 
trackers. I don't know if you're like me, but I have a memory of a goldfish. These are necessary so you don't lose your housing or blue ID because replacing them, I remember it was around 50 to 75 dollars. Don't quote me on that, but I do think it was around that area. Portable battery chargers. These are very convenient, lifesavers. I cannot recommend them enough. If I had to pick one, I have a Mofi one that I had for years. It literally charges my laptop, my phone, everything like multiple times, and it's great. Rain jackets. Weather in Florida is just horrible. It basically rains every single day. Or if you just want to go on a water ride and want to get wet, it's a very good alternative to a rain poncho. It usually just like sticks to your skin and makes you sweat and it's all disgusting. And I have a Columbia one that it has a pocket that you can just like put it in and it folds into like a little bag and you can clip it on your backpack. A water bottle. I know this may be ridiculous, but personally, I'm not a fan of the taste of the water in Florida. But there's like a Brita bottle that I bought that has a straw with a filter. And if you're getting it for work, because of the guidelines that they have for bottles, just to be safe, I would recommend either a black one or a silver like metal stainless steel one. Those are usually the best or the safest options when it comes to bottles for work. Second category, a small bag. I would say Lunch White is a perfect small bag, but I would say the canvas fabric version is better because the regular like pleather ones are very hard and sometimes extremely difficult to get into lockers, especially the Universal or Islands of Adventure lockers. They're like this big, so just get the fabric ones. Sunglasses, self-explanatory, I always have a pair of them. Ray-Bans are always my go-to, but if I can just say something, get cheap ones for work. Don't be like me, dropping $300 sunglasses and then cracking them in the middle of your shift. Sunscreen. This is very specific to whatever works for you, so I don't honestly have any brands to recommend. I just put an FPF that is like more than 50 and I'm good to go. Jacket. If I can recommend anything, I would recommend a Columbia one. This is the one that has like the Omni hit inside and it's very, very nice. First aid kit. I would say bring anything that is over the counter, cold and flu, throat, cough, anything that you can bring, bring it. But just so you guys know, there is a pharmacy on the Epcot cast member parking and most of the medicine that they sell there, they sell it to you with the store price. Third category, canned food, toiletries, toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner, detergents. Both of my programs, I brought at least a week supply of all the things that I just mentioned and it made my moving in very smooth. I would say bedding, blankets, pillows and stuff like that. Get it before you get there. Besides trying to avoid to go out as much as you can, most of the time the things around Flamingo will be out of stock because everybody will arrive on the same day. Since you're gonna know the size of your bed before you arrive, I would just recommend at least to bring a sheet. Fourth category, a water filter pitcher. Rita is the only one that I usually use because the other off-brands one are not as good. A smart home. Speakers are not allowed in Flamingo. They do a lot of smart assistance. Cups. I would just recommend bringing tumblers. I had like three corksicles that my friend would use every single time that they would come over because I avoided using anything that Flamingo gave me because I was afraid to be taken out of my paycheck. So yeah, just saying. Hangers. This is very helpful because hangers do not take that much weight on your luggage and you just don't want to be setting up your closet and going to the store next to you and having no hangers. Like literally there's like no hangers for like three miles outside of Flamingo. It's just a very smart move. A wagon. Personally, I didn't have one, but I was extremely jealous of the people that did. It's extremely convenient and Flamingo did rent them out, but let me tell you something. I was too lazy. I would just take my luggage is another good tip. Take that suitcase anywhere. Just put all the groceries in there. And for the fifth category, computer, iPad, headphones, instant camera, 10 out of 10. I had them hanging all over my room and I just literally bought this pack of 60 because I just loved how they look just hanging around with the string lights and everything. It's like the easiest way to decorate your room too. I would say bring decorations for your room but like don't be going crazy with them because just know that you're not gonna be in that room for a while. And the very last thing that I would just say to bring it would be a multi plug or an extension. If I think back to the time that I had that room, those plugs were in the most annoying and inconvenient places that they could be. 
they were literally like on the side of the bed like on the frame so like if you plug something you would literally have to move the bed because it wouldn't fit and then the other one was behind my bed i was like i don't know who made this but like since they were very hard to reach i just plucked an extension cord and i lived my best life listen this video may or may not be helpful for everybody but you can just take a few of these things that you know might make your life a little bit more easier but just know that this will be a temporary experience but the memories the strength and the knowledge that you will gain from this experience will change your life and will most definitely make you a better version of yourself so i decided to make a new thing for the outro of my videos the first one is teaching you a puerto rican slang and then the second one will be recommending you a song that i literally just had stuck on my head that week and for today Puerto Rican slang it's Boricua Boricua means somebody that either has Puerto Rican descent or was born in Puerto Rico and it's what defines us as somebody that is from there and the song that I would recommend for this week would be Wish from the Wish Motion Picture soundtrack so I look up at the stars to guide me and since I'm already talking about Wish, I bought this mystery item that comes with a plushie. What am I hoping for? The store. Let's see it's like meant for people not to cheat. <gasps> I got this star! You guys don't know how obsessed I am with this star. And what a good way to end this video. Make sure that you like this video, hit that bell for notifications, and join the kingdom by subscribing. Nos vemos!